about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The way, the way we study scripture to be able to derive maximum benefit is, generally speaking, may I say this, that the Bible, scripture as we know, contains there are three expressions of god and the realities of the kingdom that are captured in scripture so that every time you open the bible you are having an encounter with three dimensions of spiritual reality number one the promises of god the first thing you encounter every time you open scripture the Bible is a compendium of the promises of God. Number two, the principles of the kingdom. They are called the mysteries of the kingdom. The modus operandi of the kingdom. That means when you study the principles of the kingdom, it helps you to understand Jesus the way. The way the kingdom operates. Jesus said in Matthew 13, I believe verse 11, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. A mystery is a hidden code of operation that is privy to a group of people. Like the military people, for instance, they have certain languages and certain expressions that you have to be a military man for that expression to profit you. Is that true? So the kingdom, the Bible contains promises. The boundary of God's commitments to the believer. Listen, you must understand that God is ever committed to the believer, but there are rules to his commitment. He is not committed arbitrarily. He is only committed within the provisions that scripture allows. So in as much as God is mighty, in as much as God is great, he cannot commit himself to the believer outside of the jurisdiction of scripture. Is that true? Yes, the Bible says he has exalted his word even above his reputation, above his name. So the promises of God, they represent the boundary of God's commitment to us. Number two, the principles of the kingdom. And then number three, prophecies. There is a prophetic dimension to the scripture. It gives us a revelation of the things to come. Now here's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 15 and verse 4, I believe. It says, the things that are written are for time. That they are written for our learning. That means the Bible expects that we be students. So that we through the patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. Hallelujah. It means that when we begin to explore scriptures, one of the ways that we draw spiritual lessons is to go back and study how things happened in the past. And then the Bible says they are written for our learning. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. There are two dimensions to sonship as revealed from scripture. Many expressions of sonship, but two of them principally... Um, suffice for our discussion this morning hallelujah the first dimension of sonship is sonship through natural descent what we call descendants that means people who are connected to a family a father and a mother by natural descent by blood an example of this is found in genesis chapter 15 and verse 5 let's let's look at a few scriptures before i begin to teach Genesis chapter 15 and verse 5. 
the bible says he brought forth abraham now and he told him look towards heaven can you tell the stars if you are if you are able to number them and he said so shall thy seed be one of the versions will say so shall thy descendants be that means there are people who would come directly from your loins now the word son uh, it comes from there are many expressions like i said but the hebrew word that we're, we're particularly interested in is called ben b-e-n and the greek is huios hallelujah this does not mean a male like gender it is a generic expression and attempts to show one who has the same nature or one who has the same quality with are we together now so when we are talking about sonship we're not necessarily talking about male or female according to this expression a son is one who by whatever means has been able to sustain the same nature are we together so we are saying that it is possible to carry the genetics of an individual by natural descent many people here are family people your parents you have children most times the children would look like one or both of the parents sometimes with very striking semblance is that true yes natural descent that a man can become a son by natural descent and then number two by adoption the second way that sonship is established as revealed from scripture is by adoption romans chapter 8 and verse 5 a classic scripture about sonship that comes by and through adoption the bible says romans chapter 8 did i get that the spirit of adoption just a moment to clarify hallelujah the bible says that we have been given the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father can you help me find that scripture please hallelujah so the believers we we are huh? 15 not five thank you we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear somebody say amen. amen but we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father do you know what that means that the spirit of adoption legitimizes our calling god father you have no right to walk up to another person who um, you are not his seed by natural descent and call him father. But he's saying there is still another route that can make sonship possible. It's called adoption. An example of this, we see that there had been sonship through adoption in scripture. I wrote down three or four of them who are not considering the scripture just to buttress my point. Number one, we see an example between Pharaoh's daughter and Moses. Moses was not her biological child, but she raised him and played that parental role. Number two, we see Eli and Samuel in scripture. Is that true? Yes. Eli and Samuel. Number three, we see Mordecai and Esther as revealed in the book of Esther. Number four, we see Joseph and Jesus. Joseph was not the natural father of Jesus, yet he was encouraged to take full responsibility and he played that fatherly role so it is possible to have sonship by natural descent bloodline or sonship by adoption hallelujah generally i told you that the concept of sonship has to do with the relationship of an offspring to the parent that means the moment you mention son there has to be father and father dear again in this context does not just mean the male parent the word father comes from the word abba a double b a abba means the source the originator it means the sustainer it also means the defender it is usually used for men but not limited to men abba means my source my sustainer my defender are we still together Praise the name of the Lord. So the Bible lets us know that there is such a concept as sonship in Scripture. And that for the believer in Christ, our sonship 
is by adoption. John chapter 3 and verse 16 reads, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. As at the time this was being carried out, Jesus was the only begotten of the Father. Is that true? But now we know that he is no longer the only begotten. He is the first of we, the begotten. We have been brought by the spirit of adoption. He is now the firstborn among many brethren. So we can call God Father. Someone call him Father. In fact, Jesus said it this way. He says, when you pray, approach prayer with this understanding. Our Father. So he lets you know you are not the only child. Our Father. My source, my sustainer, my defender. My source, my sustainer, my defender. I can dwell all day just discussing this. Because when you come to him acknowledging that he is source, there are no plan B. Lord, it is either you or I don't have any options. You are my source. Every time you say Abba, you put pressure on the integrity of the one who says he is Abba. Are we together now? Yes. Because the hallmark of fatherhood is the benevolence to communicate responsibility. Not just procreation. If ye being evil, know how to give good gifts, how much more your heavenly Father. So the real proof of fatherhood according to the scripture is the aptness to assume responsibility. If you are not assuming responsibility, no matter how many children you have, according to Bible definition, you are not Abba. You are a matured male who can procreate, but you are not father. Hallelujah. Are we still together? Many people desire to walk in the power of God. Many people desire to rise to the height of their spiritual experiences. Many people desire to live lives that are meaningful and impactful. Every time we find a person and a people who seem to live a life that is above average, we become very intentional about expressing our admiration and so on and so forth. But the Bible lets us know that in Christ, everyone has that advantage to live a life that is superior. Please listen. A life that is superior all wise. And the secret to it in truth is sonship. Sonship that is clearly understood. I want you to please lend me your attention now as I begin to teach because knowing then that sonship attempts to define your relationship between you and the Father. In this case, God the Father. There are demands to sonship before we begin to understand the dynamics of the power that comes with sonship. I think the most important in my opinion, the most important aspect of sonship is understanding the demand. And this is where I think believers sometimes make mistakes because we claim a lot of spiritual truths without searching for the demands. The demands that are involved in making it happen. Are we together now? There are demands to sonship. And there are three of them I wrote down here. And I pray that you lend me your attention. Number one, the first demand of true sonship, according to scripture, you want to manifest as a son indeed. The first biblical demand is followership. 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 Matthew chapter 4, we'll read from verse 17 to 20. Matthew chapter 4 from verse 17 to 20. The Bible says from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Next verse, please. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren. Notice they were called brethren. Never called disciples, never called apostles. They were called brethren. The Bible says Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting their net into the sea, for they were fishers. What happened? Jesus said unto them, I want to turn you from being brethren to becoming sons, 
disciples and even apostles of the Lamb. But here is the price. Follow me. Not follow it. Follow me. And I will make you. It is the responsibility of Abba to make. It is your responsibility to follow. He only makes those who follow. He does not make those who want to be made. There is no true father that just makes champions out of people arbitrarily. It is at the, the instance of your determination to follow. The first demand of true sonship as revealed from scripture is followership. Let me tell you this, followership is very costly. Followership will demand adaptation. Followership will demand, it will cost you your time, your resources, but then that is the price of true followership. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. Paul was bold enough to say this, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. In other words, I did not just become the apostle by luck. I submitted myself to followership. And I desire that you be like me. I would have to submit you to the same pattern. Follow me. Follow me means be willing to adopt my ideologies. Follow me means that you must be willing to declare your disloyalty to any ideology and pattern that is inferior. We usually are emotionally connected to our way of life, our, our view, our, our, the way we know things to be. Followership does not just mean walk along with me. Followership means be willing to buy into my philosophy. Be willing to buy into my understanding. Here's how the Bible puts it. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The proof, the true proof of followership is that there is a pouring in of the ideology of that father into the son. Are we together now? You are not a true follower if you are resistant to receiving the ideology that comes from the father to you. So many people claim they are followers, followers of God and followers of men. But with time we do not see that pouring in. Look at the disciples. They walked with Jesus and followed to a point where they could not even deny their being with Jesus. They looked at Peter and said, your face looks familiar. He tried to lie and it didn't work. That was the, the level of his followership. They, they knew that these were a select group of people. They had walked with Jesus. Everything about their lives had changed. Let me tell you this. You know you are following when you are not... You, do you know you can follow so powerfully that even your physical expression will begin to look like who and what you are following? Because the Bible says, as we behold him as in a mirror, is a law. It says we are changed into what we are beholding. Hallelujah. The price of followership. Many people desire to be sons indeed. Sons of God. And even sons connected to many visions. But they are not true followers. A follower does not tamper with the equation. Followership is a risk. It is based on trust. That I trust the person who is leading me. And I don't need to understand everything before I take a move. You see, this, this scientific approach to Christianity is why many people never see the power of God. Because there are times your mind will have to follow later on. You have to just go with God blindly, trusting that He is Abba. Abba means that the thoughts that I think towards you are thoughts of peace and not of evil. I don't have to give you every explanation. Trust me is the mission. You know that I've told you if you can trust me. We live in a world where we are obsessed with guarantees. We want a guarantee for everything. Let me tell you very sad news. There are no guarantees in this life. The only guarantee is your connection to the integrity of this God. He took out time from Genesis to Revelation unashamedly making a manifesto of his integrity to the end that you will believe him. Can I tell you this? God can be trusted. He is Abba. Not just the creator of the ends of the earth. It 
it takes a childlike approach to followership. When you become excessively scientific, when you put your ego on the line, you will create, you will aberrate that equation with all kinds of fears and emotional things. God says, go this way. He says, okay, God, how do I do it now? Am I just follow? If it be thou, bid me come. And Peter said, he told him, come. And he got up. And he began to walk immediately. Everybody say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to follow. Mm. I can tell you followership is costly. When you read, I think it's Matthew 19 and um, 19, 27. Let's look at it. Matthew 19, we're still looking at followership. A time came when they began. They became frustrated. You know why I love the Bible? It doesn't really hide anything. It records frustrations. It records everything so that we will know that this thing was not just doctor to hide something about God. These guys had followed Jesus for about three years now. And their frustrations were becoming palpable. It started quietly. They were discussing among themselves, where are we really going? Where is this man taking us? One time they attempted to shine without him and they were so disappointed. They tried to pray for the epileptic patient, you remember? At least just to find consolation that this thing was working and they were utterly disappointed. And Jesus acted as if he didn't see what was happening with them. Now they got to a point where... They said, we have to confront this man. We left everything to follow him. Here's what they said. Peter said unto him, Behold, let me get your attention, Jesus. We have forsaken all. This is the price of followership. You don't just follow. You have to forsake something to follow. Can I tell you, you are a true follower when you let me see what you gave up. If you did not give up anything, you are not a genuine follower. We have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? Jesus did not say you are lying. They truly did. They forsook their ambition. They forsook their ego. They forsook whatever it is. And they began to follow. Come follow me and I will make you. Come follow me and I will lead you. There are many people who do not want to follow genuinely because they are still connected to yesterday and yet they want to step into tomorrow. You have to choose one of the two. Either to remain with yesterday or become so disloyal to yesterday as a proof of your determination to enter tomorrow. Yesterday and tomorrow will not go together. This one thing I do, he says, forgetting the things that are behind, I press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ. Is God speaking to someone? Maybe this is a prophetic word for someone. You've held on to yesterday too long. Whether your achievement or your failure, they can cause the same thing, your downfall. Both good and bad can still destroy you, depending on what you do with them. The achievements of yesterday can make you so complacent that you may not make progress for tomorrow. The failure of yesterday can make you so fearful that you will not want to move again. Someone in this service has to make up your mind that I am truly willing to follow and to follow all the way. Follow. The first price of true sonship is followership. When I started with God, I burned the bridges behind me completely. No plan to build them. God, I will follow you. Complete total followership. Abraham, come out of your father's house. Let me show you how God makes great people. Come out to a land I will show you. God, does it not have a name? Just follow me. There are many details you will not get when you begin to walk with God. Believe me when I tell you this. Don't be ashamed if you can't give everybody the full picture. It's not lack of vision. God ministers to us in seasons. Are we together now? So you can get to a point in your life where the mission becomes follow me. And keep following. And keep following. Lord, it's ten years. Where are we going? Follow me. And then you will turn back and find out that God has so elevated you 
to a position of honor, a position of glory, a position of grace. Second prize, very quickly. The second prize of followership is the prize, the, the prize of sonship is the prize of total dependence. I'm about to say something that would disturb you. In this kingdom, independence is rebellion. In this kingdom, the proof of maturity is your ability to submit yourself totally to depend on God and to depend on authority. John 5. Let's start from verse 17. Then we'll jump to 19. Then we'll jump to 30. John 5 verse 17. Listen to Jesus. Remember this same Jesus we're talking about. Apostle John, when he started his, his synoptic account, he traced Jesus from his divinity. And he said, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. The same was with God in the beginning. So he made it clear that this one you are talking about was with God in the beginning. But hear what Jesus had to say. Do you know Jesus, when he walked on the earth, he never called himself Father. Jesus. You will not find any mention of Jesus calling himself Father. Total dependence. The cost for true sonship. Here's what Jesus said. But Jesus answered them, My Father walketh hitherto, and I walk. That means I have to depend on what he is doing. To find meaning and even walk here. Look how vulnerable and helpless he's sounding. As though it's not Jesus talking. Go to verse 19. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ah! The Son can do nothing of himself. Are we Bible people? The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, this also doeth the Son likewise. Everybody say dependence. Do you know how embarrassing it is for an adult to admit this? That you are that helpless, that you draw your creativity entirely from a source higher than you. Humans are proud people. It's not very easy to sit down and make yourself look so weak after school, after knowledge, gaining knowledge, gaining whatever it is. Jesus walks upon the earth and it looks like he's, he's, making, he's making a mockery of his pedigree. I can do nothing. I have to depend on my father. That is sonship. I can of my own self, verse 30, do nothing. Jesus, you can of your own self do nothing. The word, as I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which had sent me. And Jesus did not just manifest because he was Jesus. I'm showing you the protocol because he came as the pattern man so that we look up to him. He left the pattern for us. Generally in this kingdom, the moment you want to see the glory of God, the glory of God meaning any dimension and any expression of God in your life, there are patterns that forerun the glory. The patterns of God forerun His glory. Whenever you see the manifestation of the glory of God in a life, in a place, it is proof that His patterns have been honored. If you see the glory of God in a man's life financially, it is proof that his patterns have been honored. You see the glory of God in, in maybe supernatural power, anointing. Every time you see the manifestation of God's glory, it is proof that his patterns have been adhered to. He told Moses, ensure that you build according to pattern. If it's my glory that tabernacle will host, then it has to be according to pattern. Hallelujah. Total dependence. 
total dependence that you depend on him for strength you depend on him for wisdom you depend on him for everything can you imagine how sarcastic jesus was do you know that age-wise some of the disciples were older than jesus from the age standpoint and yet he looks at them and says little children have you any catch what, what sort of a state? Who are you? What is that what God taught you? This is how you, you came from heaven to show us this pattern? Do you have the maturity and the stamina to be dependent? Don't you know that dependence is strength indeed? John 21. Let me show you something Jesus said. John 21. Let's start from verse 15. Mm. Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than this? He was probing into his love life. Let's go to verse 17. That's what I'm looking for something in verse 17. He said, Feed my sheep. 18. Verily, verily, I say unto you, please look up if you are a Christian. When thou was young, Thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee where thou wouldest not. That means the proof of maturity and stamina in this kingdom is when you can reach out and allow another hold your hand and lead you, sometimes even to places you do not want to go. There is a story in the Bible in Luke chapter 15. Now is a good time to start that story. From verse 11. A core lesson before I now wrap up with the power that is in sonship comes from this story. It is the most classic expression of fatherhood and sonship. A parable given by Jesus himself. The Bible says, in fact, when the Bible says there was a certain man, it means it actually happened. Is that true? Now follow the story. He said, a certain man had two sons. How many sons? Whoever has sons is called what? Father. Is that true? So this father had two sons. You know, the story of the prodigal son is so powerful because it shows us what happens when you are under the influence of fatherhood what happens when you rebel and how to come back if you so wish very beautiful rendition it it leaves it leaves you with the option of choosing by showing you putting together many actions versus the consequences that follow now let's learn from scripture the younger of them said to his father Give me the portion of goods that followed to me. And he, divide, and he divided unto them his living. Watch this. The first mistake that this man made was that he switched from stewardship to ownership. In this kingdom, owners are rebels. We do not own anything in this kingdom. Ownership is proof of rebellion. Right from Genesis, you may freely eat. But it is not yours. First Corinthians chapter 4, when you read from verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, Let a man so account of us as stewards, you know, faithful ministers and stewards of the mysteries of God. Verse 2 says, Moreover, First Corinthians 4, verse 2 now, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. The reason why many of us today, respectfully speaking, are depressed and going through all kinds of things is because we have assumed a responsibility that was not within our job description. Ownership is costly. You do not have the power to be an owner. Owner means you have to maintain. God relieved you from the burden of maintenance by making you a steward. Now, 
Let me, when I say ownership, of course, physically we have things trusted to us and we must work. I mean ownership in terms of the responsibility of your life. That there are so many things you cannot do. And God said, leave ownership to me. The earth is the Lord's. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't rush, don't rush. There are four things that makes anyone Lord. For you to be Lord according to that scripture... You must have dominion and absolute control over four things. Number one, the earth. Number two, the resources called the fullness. Number three, the mindset that governs that territory. And then number four, the inhabitants. Whoever has this must be Lord. Then the ultimate test of Lordship is that whoever owns the earth must be able to exit himself and come back by himself. Every other king who claimed to be Lord, when he died, he did not have the power to come back. Are you seeing now? Because you see, according to the law of territory, when you exit this earth, you can't bring yourself back. It will take someone who is in the earth to call you back if you must come. And here is Jesus. No mortal man was calling him back in prayer. No. Which is a violation to the law. Because for everyone who rose from the dead, there was somebody, a human person with a body, who called him. Even Jesus called Lazarus. Is that true? Now, who called Jesus back? That was proof that he was Lord. The man who can exit the earth and return back. That's not what I'm teaching. I just thought to just, just drum that scripture. It was while he was coming back, that this statement came, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted ancient doors, that the King of glory. And the gate said, no, we are not used to this. There is nobody who is authorizing that entrance. And they asked the question, who is this King of glory? Question. This was the reply. Who is this King of glory? question the reply was the lord he never said god the lord lord means absolute owner the lord who is strong and mighty the lord who is mighty in battle and the gates opened and he came with honor and dignity and he arose we're getting there when we talk about the power where your topic is coming from because when you really understand the power that sons carry you will see that walking in the supernatural is not just privy to a group of people you can never truly be a blessing when you are not supernatural it's not about being anointed it's about a commitment to being a blessing hmm. so dependence dependence something happened to jacob that is a lesson jacob walked with god to a point where god named himself after jacob now let me tell you this one of the ways god honors men is to name himself after them the god of abraham the god of isaac that is not a gift that is a reward. That a man can so walk with God that he will have a personal name. It's a depth of relationship. And captured in that name will be a dimension of God. That every time it is invoked, God will act in a certain way as a memorial to that person. Are you getting what I'm teaching now? Yes. The manifestation of the God of Abraham is not the same as the God of Isaac. It's not the same as the God of Jacob. No. So Jacob is about to teach us how he was able to secure that level of intimacy with God. In chapter 28, the Bible says he came to a place called Luz to sleep. And when he lay down on a stone, he had a dream. And he saw a ladder that was connecting the heavens and the earth. Angels ascending and descending. At the top of it was God himself. And he began to speak and tell him prophetically about his destiny. 
Jacob woke up from his vision and he said, Surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, This must be the house of God, you know, the gate of heaven, and so on and so forth. And he was careless with that encounter. Next scene, he would pay the price for 20 years in Laban's house for trivializing such an encounter. Now in chapter 32, God comes again. This time around, Jacob is wiser because pain can be a blessing. There are certain things that only pain can bring and teach. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it's true. Hallelujah. Now he was prepared. He had seen the value of an encounter with God. And in chapter 32, the Bible says he dismissed his wives. He dismissed his cattle. When he was alone, a man came to him. Now watch the encounter. And he held him and began to wrestle with that man. And the man said, leave me for the day breaketh. And Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. How did he bless him? Number one, what is your name? I am Jacob. He said, thou shalt no more be called Jacob but Israel. For as a prince you have had power with God and you have prevailed. And then the Bible says he touched the hollow. You see that? That he is able to stand strong independent of any aid is because there is a structure in him that is complete and god says i don't walk with men this way if i meet you complete there is nothing much i can do i will have to take away something from you that becomes your point of dependence on me and god called it a blessing i'm showing you how he blessed jacob so when god comes to bless you <laughs> one of the ways he blesses you is hold on he searches for what has been him before his arrival. And that becomes what he is going to touch. He does not touch it to destroy you. He touches it to bless you. Because two sons depend on Abba. That's why the Bible says in following, make sure you only follow them who through faith and patience. If you don't find faith in their pursuit, and patience run away from them. Faith means that they had to place their trust on a government and authority higher than them. That in following people, discern how they got their results. Did you find somewhere in their equation where they had to depend on God? If you don't find it, that is a risk. So Jacob received that blessing that would have called a curse. He touched the whole of his tie. And Jacob became incomplete. He became destabilized. And now he blessed him. When he blessed him, the Bible says, The sun arose and he called that place Peniel. It says, For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. There are many of you that some of the things that may look like your point of achievement that God touched, it was not necessarily the devil. It was God luring you to bring you to a deeper place of dependence. To say you've carried the narrative that it only takes a job to do well. Now it's been five years without a job and you've never begged. Have I proven to you that I am Abba enough? The moment the point is proven, he will give you one job that will pay for that five years. To mean that it was not about withholding it. It was about teaching you something. So that in the place of worship, you can throw the job like your alabaster box and still worship. And say, Job, you met me in a relationship with someone. Prosperity, you met me in a relationship with someone. You are only a channel. You cannot be Abba. You see, let me tell you this. Everything that God gives you, I don't know what it is about things and people. There is an obsession to be God. Your job, finances, opportunities, and they will attempt climbing that ladder to sit at the throne of your heart. So God designs a system and brings you to a point where nothing, you guard it with jealousy. No matter what God brings around you, you know that dependence is the law of sonship. So when God gives you ministry, when God gives you anointing, when God gives you a voice, in the place of worship, you tell them, do not come beyond this boundary. This is me and my father. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the fame. 
But I want you to know that the reason why you came was because Abba called you. So the one who called you is the one my allegiance remains to. Can I tell you this? When you get to a point of total dependence, believe me when I tell you this, when you get to a point of total dependence, God can take someone's prayer request and bring it for you as a reward, as a gift, and just give it to you. And he said, God, I don't remember praying for this. And he says, that's what happens when people depend on me. Back to our story. Luke chapter 4. Is God speaking to someone? Was that Luke chapter 4? The story of the prodigal son. Luke 15 verse 11. So you can see from this story that there were two sons. Are we together now? For as long as they were under the authority of their father, certain words were not mentioned. Number one, lack. There was no lack provided they were stewards. Now the boy, look at this temptation. May it never happen to you in Jesus' name. Verse 12. The Bible says, the young man, I don't know who advised him, but clearly those who advised him was the one he spends the money with. Is that true? Because every time you begin to take the decisions that negate the authority you are under, there is another voice sponsoring it. When Adam fell, God came to him in the cool of the day and said, Adam, where art thou? And he says, I heard your voice, but I hid because I was naked. Next question, who told you? You have submitted yourself to the influence of another voice. So now this young boy probably would go and meet friends and they would tell him, shame on you. At your age, you are still under the authority of your father and make him feel stupid for dependence. Not knowing that it was his dependence that was responsible for that honor. And he went to his father and he said, I am tired of having it in your name. I want it in my name. Independence means I want it in my name. Let the credit for it go to me. I am tired of singing a song and they clap for you. I am tired of doing exploits and people keep giving you the credit. I need to enjoy it too. And because you see the character of God is that he gave you a will and he will honor it. Even at the expense of a man's eternal salvation, God will allow him to choose. So the father showing the character of God honor that request verse 13 and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and wasted his substance with riotous living the first mention the first decision he's taking in his life outside of the influence of his father was a stupid decision are you seeing that his results were not a proof of his understanding they were a proof of the covering and the authority of his father the first official decision he's taking alone is leading him into trouble the bible is mentioning words that should not have been associated with him waste there are many times when you see us, the result is not a true reflection of our intelligence. We are hiding behind the wisdom of the ancient of days. And our dependence on him makes us to look so wise. So when men are clapping for us, we know the truth about the story. And we can quietly go back and then publicly tell you, Hey, this result is not within the world of men. Men cannot go this far. There is the wisdom of the ancient moving through our frail minds and making it look like it's a product of our creativity. Can I tell you this? Master the law of sonship by having the unashamedness to let men know that behind the exploits around your life is the wisdom of the living God. Is God speaking to someone? 14. Let's hurry up so we can pray. The Bible says when he had spent all, insufficiency associated to ownership and associated with rebellion. For as long as he was with his father, there was no mention of these words. Now he had violated the law of dependence. He wanted to feel he was a man, not knowing that independence is proof that you are a child. He began to be in want. What scripture comes to your mind here? If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall 
not want. Now, look at the way this guy began to deteriorate. One decision after another, leading him, plunging down, down again. The Bible says he went and joined himself. So he was really interested in relationships, but not with his father. In the height of his pain, he felt that he would have to go and join himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his field. Oh dear, this is a lesson. Whoever you join yourself with determines what really flows to you. He joined himself with his father. And the benevolence of the father was on him. Now he joined himself with a struggling citizen. And the man said, you met me, don't think that things are alright. Whatever I have, I can. I will communicate according to my riches. And the best I can give you is to send you to go and feed the swine. He sent him into his field to go and feed the swine. 16. And he would fain have filled his belly with the horse that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him absence of honor. You see that now. Absence of favor. Because one of the biblical proofs of favor is that your hands will never be empty. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. Exodus 3.21 the moment your hands are empty, there is an explanation that the favor of God may not be at work in your life. Back to our story, please. I hope you love scriptures. Praise the Lord. We are learning now so that we'll pray. The Bible says no man did give unto him. Now question, where were all the people he spent this with? I can assure you that gentleman must have had a few friends who came around and said now you are talking now that this guy was broke and his life was scattered the friends found their way hmm. verse 17 and when he came to himself this is a miracle that must happen to everyone there are times that it's not just the Holy Spirit that needs to talk to you. There are times that it's not about demons. A man has the power to come to himself. He came to himself and said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare? Look at this now. The miracle is happening to him. And I perish with hunger. I will arise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This gentleman, the Bible is showing us what happened to him when he went out of sonship. And now he's saying, I will arise. Do you know the beautiful thing with this story? Even in his fallen state, he still called his father, Father. I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. And ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. What a father. He never met the father in the house. And the father never met him with the pigs. They met somewhere at the point of his obedience the love of the father meeting with the obedience and the determination of the son to meet his father. As soon as he met the father, the father didn't say, what is the meaning of this? Where are you coming from? The Bible says he embraced him. That you have taken the step to be restored to sonship. I will honor that effort. And he kissed him and restored his symbol of royalty by giving him that signet ring. 22. The father said to his servants, quickly, look how instant it is to experience the blessings of sonship. Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Uh -huh. And bring Jitha a fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Please follow the story. For my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to marry. End of the story of that person. Now watch another story 
that many people don't learn anything from. Are you ready for the next story? <laughs> 25. Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what things this meant, what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father had killed the fatted calf, because he had received him safe and sound. Hear what the brother said. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore, his father, we need to appreciate that father. You see, you see a good father there? The father came out and said, What is wrong, my son? And he said, no, father, this is not fair. This is not fair. He answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve you. Neither transgress I at any time thy commandments. Hmm. And yet thou never givest me a kid that I may make merry with my friends. Do you know, this is going to lead me to the next thing I'll be teaching you. This gentleman was in the house, but he was not enjoying the blessings of sonship. Although he was in the house, he didn't go out, he did not act his own rebellion, but in his mind he was receiving the same consequence as the son, the one who left. This is not the story of one bad son and one good son. This is a story of two sons doing the same thing, using different expressions. Are you getting the lesson now? The real hero in the story was the father. Because the man was angry. This guy had friends and they had started speaking to him too. Just like they spoke to the younger one. Read it. Please go back to verse... verse we're, we're almost done. <laughs> it says... Yet thou never gavest me a key that I may go and make merry with my... That means the friends had started speaking to him too. All the things the younger brother did wrong that led to what he was doing was what was already happening to the elder brother. That means if the younger brother's mistake did not lead the father to correct the elder, one day the elder would have followed that way too. So just because you are in the house does not mean you are safe. We need to examine your understanding. Those who are afar off have already veered off, obviously. But those who are in are even the ones who are at a greater risk. Because you can feel that you are in and you are immune. Whereas in your mind, you are not genuinely connected. Is this a lesson for someone? 30. Verse 30, please. As soon as this thy son was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots. That means they were getting the reports of all the things. You see all the things this man wanted to explore with his life? Thou hast killed for him a fatted calf. 31, two more verses now. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. All, not some. I gave that guy some. Because you wanted ownership. But all that I have is thine. 32. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive, was lost, and now is found. The story of the prodigal son. It should be the story of two sons deviated. Not just the prodigal son. Two sons. Both the elder and the younger had the same problem. One executed his error. The other one was still having his error in process. But in a matter of time, both of them would have done the same thing. The story is that none of them maximized the potential that came with their being in such a benevolent father's house. Not the one who left, nor the one who stayed. Truly enjoyed the blessings of fatherhood. Are we together? Very powerful. There is a principal blessing that follows sonship. There are many, but there is one principal blessing that follows sonship. It's called inheritance. Inheritance is the reward of two sons. Psalm 133 from verse 1 and 2. 
The Bible says, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Verse 2. It says, It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the bed, even Aaron's bed, and went down to his garments. Are you seeing it now? So, from the head of Aaron, it is going down to other parts of the body connected to him. Inheritance. Inheritance is a very powerful concept. We know this and we understand this so powerfully in Africa. Many people understand the concept of inheritance where a man is able to will whether possessions, to will, whatever it is that makes you an extension of that person. It's called inheritance. Inheritance. Ephesians 1 and verse 11. The reception of possessions, the reception of traits, the receptions of genetic qualities or whatever quality that makes you able to, repli to, to replicate and then to become an extension of your father is called an inheritance. The Bible says, Ephesians 1 verse 11, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. The Bible says we have obtained an inheritance. Can I tell you, the chief inheritance that we received in Christ is the Holy Spirit. Listen carefully. The Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written in that Mosaic law, that cursed is the man that hangs upon a tree. Is that true? That the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith, might come upon the Gentiles to the end that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So the principal inheritance that God gives men is not money. The principal inheritance, please listen carefully, that God gives sons is not cars and houses and all of these things. In fact, any father that gives you anything physical alone really did not give you an inheritance. Read your Bible. In allocating his inheritance, Abraham gave his other sons with, um, what's her name now? Keturah, about six sons, he gave them physical things, estates, possessions, but to Isaac, he did not give any. He released something on him and said, go. So, when an inheritance is physical, is the least form of inheritance. God gave us his best, the spirit of the living God. That is the inheritance that we have received today, the spirit of adoption. Can I tell you this? That the presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a man is what makes that you are able to walk in the fullness of your sonship. Now, please let me the next five to ten minutes and let's discuss the power that is contained in sonship. Now that we understand that sonship can be by natural descent or by adoption. Now that we understand that sonship involves your relationship between the father who is abba source sustainer defender protector and the son now that you understand that there are demands to sonship the demand first and foremost of followership the demand of total dependence in fact i omitted one you may want to write the demand of honor honor there is no true sonship without honor to the father from malachi chapter 1 and verse 6 the bible says a son honored his father you may want to just write it down and we said the principal blessing that follows sonship is inheritance 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 in this case for the believer our real inheritance is what the bible calls the blessing now, many people have called the blessing many things, and I, I understand from the perspectives, but what the Bible really calls the blessing is the Holy Spirit. It's beyond an anointing. It is literally the Holy Spirit. He is the blessing. It is from Him. The hymn writer says, Praise God from whom all blessings, from that the blessing would come every other blessing. 
the wisdom of God, the creativity, the power, and all of these things. But God wants us to walk in the fullness of sonship. In fact, the Bible says that the earnest expectation of creation, that they are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Another version says creation is waiting for God to reveal who his sons truly are. Hallelujah. Yes. When Jesus said he came from the Father, they said that means he was trying to say he was exactly the same thing with the Father. Because whatever is in Abba, through followership, through dependence, and through honor, will eventually find expression in the Son. Is that true? When Elisha carried the mantle of Elijah, he went to the Jordan and he said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And the sea parted hither and thither. And the prophet said, Surely the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. When I began my journey with God, please pay attention now. I read through scripture and I read through history. I'm a student of Bible history. I'd love to know what God did in the past so that we can position ourselves to be mightily used by God. And I saw that many people captured in history, men and women alike, got to points in their lives where they were marvelously used by God. It seemed as though in every generation you would find people generally just loving the Lord and then you would find a few people who would become unique expressions of the divine life in power, in grace, manifesting the multifaceted possibilities of the Christ to a degree that was commendable. And I wanted to know what was the secret behind these people. I studied I read materials, I read the Bible, I didn't want to live an ordinary life, not just for the purpose of flesh and all of that. I really wanted to do something with my life that would count. And I found a secret that for the next five minutes I'll be sharing with you and then we'll pray. Can you pray in the Spirit in one minute whilst you're seated and ask the Lord to open your eyes. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. Now, I want you to be very sensitive as I teach now because I want to show you something that will open you to a new realm of the anointing, a, a dimension of the power and the grace of God upon your life. When I walked in here, I sensed in my heart that there were people who came for this meeting with, with an intention in their heart. It's like they're just saying, Lord, I'm searching for something I do not know. I just know there is a dissatisfaction. This cannot be it. There, there has to be more. I'm tired of giving explanations. I'm tired of just saying things. I'm tired of preaching and going back and saying, why didn't I really get this? I'm tired of giving people an explanation as to why this did not happen. Please sit down. Let me show you something. Hmm. The power of sonship. Let me show you how spiritual power is measured first in the kingdom. Are you ready? Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1. This is the hallmark of spiritual power. It is important for us to know where God wants to take us to so that when you say you are walking in power, this is the benchmark that God gives you. Let's start from verse 2 for sake of time. Genesis 1 verse 2. God himself is demonstrating his idea of power. The Bible says there was darkness, there was void over the face of the deep. Comes from the Hebrew expression tohu wabohu, confusion and chaos. Verse 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. By this singular expression, 
God shows us his definition of power. That you do not have power in the kingdom until you sustain the ability to say, and there is. When you can say, and there is, you have entered a realm of true power. This is where God is leading us to. And God said, and there was. It doesn't matter what he said should be. And God said, listen to me, the power of God only moves when he says. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Verse 4, the Bible says, and God saw. So you say it, it manifests, your eyes can see it, and you see that what you said is good. This is God's definition of power. By the time you say it and it does not happen, there is a compromise to your sonship. That means everyone under the sound of my voice should evolve spiritually to a level of stature where you sustain the ability to say and see. This is how you become a blessing. Now when you speak over people and you say in the name of Jesus, may doors be opened, they know that there is an antecedence, there is a track record. That like God, since you are created in his image, if you are his son indeed, and his spirit is upon you, you should say and see that what you said is good. Are we together? How many things do we say that never happens? It is proof that there is something with the experience of our sonship. We have said many things about our lives. We have said many things to others. In the name of the Lord, the government that we supposedly submit to, and yet nothing happened. So I need us to understand where we are going. Because in this kingdom we reign through words. And the real proof of dominion is when your words carry the capacity, the power to make manifest that which was spoken. Genesis 21 and verse 1, please. Genesis 21 and verse 1. The Bible says, And the Lord visited Sarah. Please read with me. Want to read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had. And the Lord did unto Sarah. Not as she wanted. Not as he wanted. As he. If he says it. And it happens. Then that is power. Read from Genesis to Revelation. This has been the highest index to measure spiritual power. That when men say, and it happens, they call them gods immediately. They say you are demonstrating an identity that is not human. From whence did you get this ability to say, and it becomes? Listen, this is where God is bringing us into. Because the only way you can be a blessing to everyone around you, is not just by doing, by saying, and it becomes. Do you know what it means that you can step into a family after this conference and see darkness and it reminds you of Genesis 1 verse 2 and you tell them, find rest. An envoy has come. I, I am representing a government. Usually they will doubt you until you say. When you say and it does not happen, that picture misrepresents the potential of the kingdom that you represent. Because if it is true that he has made us kings and priests unto God, even to reign on earth, and he says where the word of a king is, there is power. There must be something about your words. You see, do not allow your repeated failure as a result of lack of spiritual power and not understanding sonship to so cheapen your words that it no longer carries power. So when you say God bless you, people just laugh. They know it will not happen. It is my prayer that someone will catch this principle and begin to demonstrate the power that comes through sonship. That people will do anything to see you because they know that you are the clearest representation of the power in this kingdom they know. It has nothing to do with being a man of God. It has everything to do with being a son. Let me teach you one law and we're done. This is the fundamental law 
that controls spiritual power in this kingdom as far as manifesting sonship is concerned it is called the law of submission hmm. Matthew chapter 8 please from verse 5 let's wrap up now Matthew chapter 8 and verse 5 the Bible says Jesus was entering into Capernaum and there came to him a centurion the centurion is in the ranking of a captain in the army beseeching him the Bible says next verse and saying Lord thy servant lieth at home my servant lieth at home sick of palsy grievously tormented please follow the story and Jesus said unto him I will come and heal him look at Jesus you are a captain you are a noble man I will respect you by coming to your house and the man shocked Jesus with a statement that gives us a very powerful spiritual formula the centurion answered and said Lord I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof but speak the word only are you seeing now remember our reference Genesis 1 speak the word only and my servant shall be healed consistent with that law of creation you say it it happens speak the word only why what is the basis of his confidence he says it here for i am a man under authority that means jesus this formula is known to us too we understand it i am a man who is under the authority of a roman government and by the privilege of my submission i can read with me i can and he does that look like genesis 1 3 and 4 because of the authority i now demonstrate the power of the government in this case the roman government and i prove that i'm truly under authority by saying to this man and he goeth to another come and he comes to my servant do this and he do it that means jesus i know you don't have to go that far you are under authority yourself the reason why you are doing well is because you are not doing well as father you are doing well as son you have unashamedly submitted to the governing authority of heaven and you derive that strength from that submission so we understand ourselves on this wise and that this is what he says when jesus heard it he who taught you where did you get this understanding from that men walk in power consistent with their degree of submission to the authority that means the power that is exerted in and through a believer's life is not just necessarily a product of prayer and fasting alone no more than that your submission you will always manifest the power of the government you are under there are people for instance who have all kinds of rankings in the military and by the privilege of their ranking they can speak listen before anything submits to you it checks your submission the the principle of dominion that we have received in this kingdom the kind and the dimension of dominion we have is called shared dominion we do not have absolute dominion our dominion is derived from that which was given to us in christ are we together now this was the mistake of the sons of Sceva. They had sincere hearts, but they were not under authority. And the realm of the spirit knew. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. It was when Jesus went down under the influence of John into the water, as he came out to demonstrate his willingness to submit, your Bible says his heavens. Your Jesus walked under a closed heaven, even though as the word of God, for 30 years, his heavens were closed till submission opened his heavens. Just because you are sinless and just because you are sincere does not mean you would demonstrate the authority of this kingdom. I have met with people and here and there I've needed people to help me in an area and they come with boldness because what seems difficult for me may be very easy for them based on the authority. The moment they wear their uniform, there is confidence because they are not moving alone. There is a government that backs them. Hear me. 
the real strength of a son is not derived in himself is derived as an overflow of the authority that backs him this is why jesus gave us something called his name do you know what is contained in the name of Jesus? The name of Jesus is an extension of his office. He never gave us the name until his coronation service was done. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So when the coronation service was done, he said, All hail, all authority in heaven and in the earth has been given unto me. Go with this consciousness. Don't go alone. If you go alone, you will be surprised. He tested this on the disciples. Send them two by two. And they returned with shock. They said, can you imagine? Even the demons were subject to us in thy name. And he says, that's the key. Don't forget it. So when Peter and John went to pray, and they saw a man at gate beautiful, he said, silver and gold, I do not have. But we are under the influence of an office in that name rise up and walk and the man was watching them he said no if i speak as peter don't believe me but i'm speaking as a son stand everything that we do in this kingdom that works only works because we have allowed our lives to be the channels for the authority that we submit to to find expression there's no time I would have taught you the ultimate test of submission is when you can say, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. You are not truly submissive when you have options. You are not truly submissive when there is a plan B. Jesus himself showed us the zenith, the apex of his sonship when he went to Gethsemane. The Bible says he cried and he said, Father, in fact, let's look at that as a last scripture. Mark 14 and verse 36. I like the rendition, the synoptic account of Mark. Mark 14 and verse 36. This is what happened to Jesus. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto you. That means, Lord, I'm going through this agony as the substitutionary sacrifice. If all things are possible, is it not possible to route salvation through another means and spare me this pain? But he remembered the law of sonship. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. True sons have lost the ability to say no. They cannot say no, not to the Father. It is yes, it is yes. It is yes. So if he sends you, the answer is yes. If he says, go and lay your hands on the sick and heal them, the answer is yes. Lord, but what of my ego? Nevertheless, not my will. He tells you, carry your account and give for this program. And he said, Lord, what of the building project? But you remember you are a son nevertheless so if sonship is a responsibility it's not just about saying i am a son the next time you call yourself a son let these three dimensions of teachings come to your mind the demands the benefit and then the power that flows from that sonship i submit to you by god if there is anything good and there is anything that is noteworthy you have seen in the life of this man standing before you it is not because of anything we have done in our strength and by ourselves. This is the simple but powerful secret. That you come in the name of the Lord. What gives me the guarantee that you will never be the same? It would be stupid for me to come here by my own strength and actually believe that your life will never be the same. But when you come as touching this government, I have probed this government enough and I know that God is mighty. I know that this government we are under can lift in one night. One night. Not one week. One night. So our confidence is derived from the manifesto of God. From Genesis to Revelation, God did not hide his ability. He let us know what he could do. 
seated in this place right now are people who are trusting to see several manifestations of the possibilities of the kingdom in your life for some of you it is sickness you want to see the power of god come to heal and to bless for some of you it's all kinds of demonic oppressions attempting to spy upon your liberty i bring you good news the bible says listen carefully it says submit yourself therefore under the mighty hand of god then it says resist the devil many are trying to resist the devil the devil verifies the spiritual verification system is the truthfulness of your submission for i am a man under authority for i am a preacher under authority for i am a businessman under authority if you're a businessman who is just a graduate from a good business school congratulations but you will be surprised and the reason why the devil would take you personal is because you have the, you have named the name of christ anything you do that is with this consciousness deserves the backing of heaven so when you lay hands on the sick as joshua selman you will be both surprised disappointed and frustrated but when you come in the name the name does not mean using it as a tool with the consciousness of this government john said i am the voice he got it right until he got it wrong for as long as he was right everything he said happened but he got it wrong when he was offended he said are you the messiah or should we expect another i made a covenant with god in and through my life and i said lord no matter what it is that you want to do i am available you can find expression through me believe me when i tell you this i have no business looking for fame I have no business looking for whatever it is i am shocked and surprised when i see people pursue you know all of these things the privilege of doing and being what he has made out of my life is a debt i will spend my life saying thank you to and all that i desire to see is that i become an extension of his possibilities to the life of men and I made a covenant with God that no human born of a woman will ever meet me twice to be blessed. Truly. I apologize if that sounds arrogant. But it's true. That you will never have to meet me twice. Like a contact twice? No. I will go on a retreat. And God said. And he saw. This is not just preaching. I'm not just delivering a good sermon. I want you to see the heart that is speaking to you. This is more than a preacher just coming to preach at a nice conference. I'm challenging you. The world is waiting. They are tired of our explanations. Can I tell you, if we don't manifest to be true sons, our children will reject God to our face. You see what is happening right now? The way people are vocal because when they press their apps, it works immediately. Their apps don't give explanations. It is only our confessions that give explanations. When they command the apps to go, they go. And now when we tell them, be blessed, nothing happens. May your life change, nothing happens. Oh, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah, the rose of Sharon, nothing happens. Then we try singing it, nothing happens. Then we try chanting it, nothing happens. It's calling you deeper, 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 deeper. It's calling you deeper, 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 deeper. Hallelujah. Just two prayer points and then I'll just take five or two minutes, five or you know, six minutes to just speak over our lives and then we're done for my session. 
I'd like us to pray. For many of us, where we have missed it is that we've just been claiming sonship. I am a son. Oh, God forbid, the devil will not destroy me. I'm a son. And yet in the realm of the spirit, you have not subscribed to the pattern that makes for the experience of sonship indeed. The law of followership, genuine followership, dependence, honor. Let this be your first prayer point. I'd like you to cry from the depth of your heart. I obtain grace to follow and to follow holy. Go ahead and pray. Someone pray. I obtain grace to follow. First, the authority of the Father in heaven and the authority over me, even as touching this commission. I obtain grace. Go ahead to pray. To follow wholly and to follow truly. Hey, la basha la brande gede bede gede bosh. Hey, pras kota basha ta brande ges kati balakus yada. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to pray and cry to the Lord that the dimension of spiritual power that must be at work in your life for your life to begin to bring glory to the name of the lord listen carefully john 15 and verse 8 says herein is our father glorified if it's true that you are son then the son must be committed to bringing glory to the father and it says herein is our father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples is that true jesus when he was teaching what we call the beatitudes he says let your light so shine Permit it to so shine, not before angels, before men. What they will see is not light. What they will see is good deeds. And by doing that, you will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 24. A scripture that has blessed me so much that you get to a point in your life where this scripture becomes a reality. And they glorified God in me. They glorified God in me through the manifestation of His wisdom, through the manifestation of His power. They glorified God in me. I'd like you to pray and desperately cry, Father, let there be a release of true spiritual power in and through my life. Go ahead and pray. I desire to do much for the kingdom. Is someone praying? That in these end times, may I be a mighty vessel. Creation is waiting for this manifestation. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Let it be a prayer from your heart. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. No matter what it is. 
I truly am ready and willing to manifest sonship. Whatever you ask. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Let, let's just take five or ten minutes. Let me just pray with you. And then we're done. Who is Bukola? I'm hearing a name, Bukola. You are a woman. You are wearing a nose mask. This is what I'm seeing. A, a woman. Is there someone like that? Bukola. I want to pray for you, madam. Can I pray for you? Yes. My head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn. I am anointed with red. What do you do? Huh? I'm seeing you with a syringe. This is. Huh? Like, I'm seeing her with a syringe and a stethoscope. Where does she work? Hospital. I want to pray for you because God is about to lift you in a way that will surprise you. You believe that? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands right now. This grace that lifts, may that grace rest upon your life. In the mighty and the marvelous name of Jesus Christ, I declare that over you. Rotimi. Rotimi. Is there someone with that name? Your name is Rotimi. You are wearing white. Complete white. Like Kaftan. This is what I'm seeing in my vision. Rotimi. Maybe they are following online. You can still connect. Is there someone like that? Rotimi. Okay, white. Can I pray for you, sir? What do you do? I want to pray for you. Because I'm seeing... The Lord connecting you to a politician in this city. You are drawing the man and presenting it as an award. And the man is blessing you. I'm seeing that connection opening you. You're, this is what I'm seeing. Do you, do you have anything to do with portrait? Port, maybe portrait drawing or whatever it is. Because I'm seeing you doing something as a gift. To give somebody who is a politician in this city. Huh? Buying some, portraits now. some portraits that's what i'm saying that you will give somebody as a gift and god will connect you and bless you in a way that will surprise you i pray for every one of you madam can you tap this woman for me please lay your hands on your stomach i rebuke this thing that i'm seeing by the power that raised christ from the dead in the name of jesus christ be set free now from this demonic whatever it is in your stomach i declare be free right now in the name of jesus christ and for all of you who are out here i decree and declare the lord who brought you here by this word whatever it is that is an issue of ailment or whatever it is in jesus name let there be a miracle for you now in the marvelous name of jesus christ let there be a miracle for you now in jesus name please return back to your seat hallelujah now i want to pray for you and we just spoke about the power of sonship and we cannot end this session without an opportunity for god to really impart this grace upon someone's life i believe like i said earlier on that there are people who came here with hunger in their heart they came to receive something the grace anointings are transferable these possibilities help us to manifest the fullness of the life the power the grace of god is, is it all right if i, if I speak that way? hallelujah bring for me the person who shouts now under the anointing this is what i'm seeing i just saw fire we're going to pray like the anointing loud shout please bring them my head is 
was exalted like the horn of the unicorn. Hallelujah. There are 11 people here I'm seeing. God is breaking the siege of delay. Please help me. Now, please listen. Listen. They are going to begin to run out by the anointing. Just hold them so they don't injure themselves. I stretch my hands right now. All over this auditorium. Just bring them out, please. In the name that is above all names. Let that anointing. Please, whether you are an usher or not, help them. I decree by the power that... Help that lady, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare every embargo over your life. Let it go now. Shout a loud amen. Let it go now. I cause delay. I declare speed. 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 Ten years in one year. I prophesy over your life. In the name that is above all names. Sir, what do you do? This man. Huh? I'm seeing you with a mic singing. Are you a music minister, sir? The Lord is asking me to pray for you because I'm seeing you climb a ladder. God wants to open another phase of ministry for you. Can I pray for you? In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. I declare, may that anointing come upon your life and shift you to a new season. In the name of Jesus Christ, that grace is upon you. You will go back and you will begin to walk in signs and in wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm still praying for people. I'm saying it again that anyone who has been in at the same place, that year in year out it looks like nothing is making progress i came to push you by prophecy by the power that raised christ from the dead right now please help them in the name of jesus go forward now go forward now go forward now help her go forward now in the mighty name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Oh dear. Our time. I'm seeing a woman here. Three years. You have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. This is God opening my eyes. You are wearing like a blue, a blue, is it a blue dress or so? Three years. Who is that? Please come. Your story is about to change. Please stand up, madam. You're together? Okay. What do you do, sir? Oh, there. There's no other mic. Okay, that's all right. No problem. Please help them. Madam, don't be embarrassed. This is a family of faith. This is a conference you will not forget in a long time. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. How long, madam? Can I pray for you? You believe in miracles? Hmm. No, that's all right. Let me pray for her. Please lay your hands on your stomach. I want to pray for you. Truly, he has been given a name. No, no, no. Please don't force her. Don't put her under pressure to come out. No. In the name that is above all names. Madam, look at me. I minister the life and the power of Jesus to you right now. I declare whatever it is that is stopping your fruitfulness according to the time of life. I lose you from it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. Be healed now. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is she the only one? You're together? You too? You too? Can I pray for you? How long have you been trusting God? Three years. Will you believe what I tell you now? Go and write the name Samuel. 
Father, lay your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare right now, by the power that raised Christ from the dead. You see, the Bible says, Blessed is she that believes. It says, For unto her there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken, spoken in the name that is above all names. Please don't come out. Okay, all of you are coming out, trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Huh? It's all right. Let me just pray for you. I'm trying to just work with time. Father, you have spoken, and in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare for this, my dear sister, let it be for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for all of you who are here, in the name of Jesus. There is, there is someone here, I'm seeing a vision. Your mother is in the hospital right now as I'm talking. Is it like, I don't know if it's a terminal disease or whatever it is. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. Let there be a miracle for mama right now. In Jesus' name, I declare. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. I open your wombs now. Regardless what the medical situation is, we veto it by the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where? My dear, stand up. Is she the one who came? Your mom? Cancer. Oh dear. Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. This is why Jesus brought you here. Father, we agree. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare an extension of Mama's life. In the name of Jesus Christ, let her not die. We bring life and we bring healing. Right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare over all of you here, return supernaturally with your miracle children. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm praying for you. I just have about two minutes. I want to respect the time. There are people, please you can return back to your seat. There are people here right now where you are. There are dimensions of the spirit you have seen in your dreams. You have desired from the depth of your heart. Some of you, certain gifts that you once saw in your life gifts of the spirit manifestations of the power of god you used to have prophetic dreams and what you saw would come to pass but right now it looks like it's faded there will be a reawakening right now please help her so she doesn't injure herself in the name of jesus christ that's all right if she... you don't have to kneel you don't have to kneel why is she here ask her for me right now in the name of jesus i want to pray Please believe me. That anointing will come upon you and your life will be turned. Some of you are in ministry, but as it is truly, you have not seen the kind of results that makes for, that justifies your sonship. You don't have to come out. Just stay where you are. I'm praying for you. Right now in the name, in the name of Jesus. Okay. In the name that is above all names. I pray right now, at the count of three, just help those under the anointing. Father, I decree and declare upon every life here, men and women, there are women like Deborah, there are men like Samson. Right now, may that anointing come upon your life. At the count of three, get ready. One, two, three. Take that fire now. Take that fire now. Take that fire now. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare a new anointing. There are women in this church that will begin to rise in power. Women like Deborah. I release that anointing upon you. Please help them, my God. Those in ministry, there are healing anointings. Grace is for healing. Let it fall right now. Let it fall right now. Please help that lady. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. Now hear me. Please be careful. Eh? So you don't injure. Don't worry. You, you don't have to come out until I mention your case. So you don't hurt yourself. Mama. And this. Why is he here? Please find out. Okay. No problem. I'm seeing doors in the realm of the spirit just opening. This is what I'm saying. Truly. That means there are people here. There were things God told you from January till now. And it looked like the doors that will open them. You see, there are times that you don't use a key. There are times that you have to break that door. So that your children and your children's children will pass. Let me prophesy. I stand upon the grace of your father in this house. And I speak over your life. Every door that has refused to open. By the power that is in the name of Jesus. I speak to that door. Ephata, be opened now. Be opened now. Be opened now. Be opened now. In the name of Jesus. And everything, everything you are involved with, please hear me. Everything you are involved with that has refused to work. Do you know there are times in your life where, like Peter, your fish may not come even though your boat is there even though your net is there even though your skill is there there will still be no fish that is not laziness that is not lack of productivity it's just a reality of life at that point you don't need skill again at that point you need jesus let me speak to someone here who because of the happenings in your life people are already asking where is your god God is about to answer them through your testimony. I decree and I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Everything that has not worked in your life. Go back now and watch it work. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. The Bible says, turn ye not words. I declare, whoever has been marking time at the same level, maybe your job, there is no increase, there is no lifting. By whatever sentiments, I come by the power that raised Christ from the dead. And I decree and declare, rise to a new level. Rise to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let me pray over your spiritual life. Please listen. I am very passionate about the state of your heart and your life as far as it is with God. This for me is the real key to a life of spiritual efficiency. That more than just receiving things, your state with God. That your heart is on fire. You love the Lord. You're on fire. Your children are on fire. Your prayer life your word study life your commitment to the house of god for the bible declares that they that be planted in the house of god it says they will flourish in the courts of our god that even in old age they will be fat and they will be flourishing the degree to which you fear the lord sincerely there are blessings that follow reverence for god it's called yirat adonai the fear of the lord Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, Psalm 112, that delighted greatly in his commands. The Bible said, his seed shall be mighty upon earth, that the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And the Bible says, his righteousness endures forever. I decree and declare over your spiritual life, whatever has eaten away your passion for God, whatever has drained your fire and your fervency for prayer, in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be restoration right now. Let there be restoration right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. When Saul met with Samuel, Samuel gave him three information that translated to his blessing. Number one, he said, the donkey that you have been looking for has been found. 
as soon as he met with the prophet the donkey started going back that means everything that has left you is still around that under a certain condition it can return back let me speak to you whatever left your life especially this year that should not have left i stand by the power of prophecy i call it back to your life number two please help her he said on your way going you will find three men holding two loaves of bread and they will salute you and give you say honor say favor let me speak over your life by the power that raised christ from the dead every embargo of shame and dishonor over anyone's life here i tear it open right now and i release you experience honor experience favor experience honor experience favor number three that you will come to the garrison of the philistines and that the hand of the lord would come upon him and he would begin to prophesy and he so prophesied that when they saw him they said is saul also one of the prophets let me pray for you a grace you did not come here with may that grace follow you back in the name of jesus christ a dimension of spiritual possibility that you did not come here with may it follow you back now for everyone who is sick in body i use these two people here these are our fathers and our uncles i'm our, our auntie here as a point of contact if there be anything that is attempting to steal your joy and cut short your life by the power that raised christ from the dead i declare be healed now be healed now be healed now help her please help that woman be healed now i command fibroids to go now i command rheumatoid arthritis go now hiv go now cancer go now in the name of jesus christ every cardiovascular disease i come against you in the name of jesus finally anyone here already appointed unto death that the devil is planning that come 2023 22 you will not be there i decree and declare by the spirit that raised christ from the dead i prophesy and i declare oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory i declare that death passes over you in the name of jesus christ and for everyone who is a faithful worker in this commission in the name of jesus christ i'm told that this man has suffered stroke in the name of jesus i decree and declare help him by the power of the holy spirit may the hand of the lord rest upon you let there be healing right now to your body supernaturally in the name of jesus christ healing right now to your body in the name of jesus christ her own is stroke too madam can i pray for you come in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare stroke for how long five years and don't cry don't cry don't cry may the lord himself do a miracle for you and bring perfection to your body in the name of jesus you don't have to come out here eh? yes in the name of jesus help her please in the name of jesus christ have to wrap up i declare the blessing of the lord upon you and i pray that this session alongside the sessions that are left hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you